Act Four of Cyrano the Bergerac. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Cyrano the Bergerac, a play in five acts by Edmond Rostand, translated by Gladys Thomas and Mary F. Gilmer. Act Four, the Carrots of Gascony post occupied by a company of carbon de castelgelu at the siege of arras in the background an embankment across the whole stage beyond view of plain extending to the horizon the country covered with entrenchments the walls of arras and the outlines of its roofs against the sky in the distance tents arms driven about drums etc day is breaking with a faint glimmer of yellow sunrise in the east sentinels at different points watch fires the cadets of gascony wrapped in their mantles are sleeping carbon de castelgelu and lebre are keeping watch they are very pale and thin christian sleeps among the others in his cloak in the foreground his face illuminated by the fire silence scene one Christian, Carbon de Castelgelu, Libre, the Cadets, then Serrano. Tis terrible. Not a morsel left. Mordieu. Carbon, making a sign that he should speak lower. Curse under your breath. You will awake them. To the Cadets. Hush, sleep on. To Libre. He who sleeps dines. But that is sorry comfort for the sleepless. What starvation! firing is heard in the distance oh plague take their firing to awake my sons to the cadets who lift up their heads sleep on firing is again heard nearer this time second cadet moving the devil again tis nothing tis cyrano coming back those who have lifted up their heads prepare to sleep again the sentinel from without ventrebieux who goes there Bergerac who is on the redoubt ventrebieux who goes there appearing at the top bergerac idiot he comes down lebre advances anxiously to meet him heavens making signs that he should not awake the others hush wounded oh you know it has become their custom to shoot at me every morning and to miss me this passes all to take letters at each day's dawn to risk stopping before christian i promised he should write often he looks at him he sleeps how pale he is but how handsome still despite his sufferings if his poor little lady-love knew that he is dying of hunger get you quick to bed nay never scold the libre i ran but little risk i have found me a spot to pass the spanish lines where each night they lie drunk you should try to bring us back provision a man must carry no weight who would get by there but there will be surprise for us this night the french will eat or die if i mistake not oh tell me nay not yet i am not certain you will see it is disgraceful that we should starve while we're besieging alas how full of complication is this siege of arras to think that while we are besieging we should ourselves be caught in a trap and besieged by the cardinal infante of spain it were well done if he should be besieged in his turn i am in earnest oh indeed to think you risk a life so precious for the sake of a letter thankless one seeing him turning to enter the tent where are you going i am going to write another he enters the tent and disappears scene two the same all but cyrano the day is breaking in a rosy light the town of arras is golden in the horizon the report of cannon is heard in the distance followed immediately by the beating of drums far away to the left other drums are heard much nearer sounds of stirring in the camp voices of officers in the distance the reveille the cadets move and stretch themselves nourishing sleep thou art at an end i know well what will be their first cry first gascon sitting up i am so hungry i am dying of hunger oh, oh up with you cannot move a limb 
nor can i first cadet looking at himself in a bit of armour hmm. my tongue is yellow the air at this season of the year is hard to digest my coronet for a bit of chester if none can furnish to my gaster wherewith to make a pint of chile i shall retire to my tent like achilles oh something were it but a crust carbon going to the tent and calling softly cyrano we are dying. dying continuing to speak under his breath at the opening of the tent come to my aid you who have the art of quick retort and gay jest come harden them up second cadet rushing toward another who is munching something what are you crunching there cannon wad soaked in axle grease tis poor hunting round about arras first gascon entering i have been after game second gascon following him and i after fish rushing to the two newcomers well what have you brought a pheasant a carp come show us quick a gudgeon a sparrow beside themselves tis, tis more, more than, than can, can be born we, we will, will mutiny. Kill mutiny cyrano come to my help the daylight has now come scene three the same cyrano appearing from the tent very calm with a pen stuck behind his ear and a book in his hand what is wrong silence to the first cadet why drag you your legs so sorrowfully Ugh. I have something in my heels that weighs me down. And what may that be? My stomach. So have I, Faith. It must be in your way. Nay, I am all the taller. My stomach's hollow. Faith, twill make a fine drum to sound the assault. I have a ringing in my ears. No, no, tis false. A hungry stomach has no ears. Oh, to eat something something oily pulling off the cadet's helmet and holding it out to him behold your salad what in god's name can we devour throwing him the book which he is carrying the iliad the first minister in paris has his four meals a day twere courteous and he sent you a few partridges and why not with wine too a little burgundy richelieu s'il vous plaît he could send it by one of his friars I, by his eminence, Joseph himself. I am as ravenous as an ogre. Eat your patience, then. Shrugging his shoulders. Always. Your pointed word. I pointed words. I would fain die thus, some soft summer eve, making a pointed word for a good cause. To make a soldier's end by soldier's sword, wielded by some brave adversary die on blood-stained turf not on a fever-bed a point upon my lips a point within my heart i'm hungry crossing his arms all your thoughts of meat and drink bertrand the fifer you were a shepherd once draw from its double leathern case your fife play to these greedy guzzling soldiers play old country airs with plaintive rhythm recurring where lurk sweet echoes of the dear home voices each note of which calls like a little sister those airs slow slow ascending as the smoke wreaths rise from the hearthstones of our native hamlets their music strikes the ear like gascon patois the old man seats himself and gets his flute ready your flute was now a warrior in durance but on its stem your fingers are a-dancing a bird-like minuet o oh, flute remember that flutes were made of reeds first not labrinum make us a music pastoral days recalling the sole time of your youth in country pastures the old man begins to play the airs of languedoc hark to the music gascons tis no longer the piercing fife of camp beneath his fingers the flute of the woods no more the call to combat tis now the love song of the wandering goat herds hark tis the valley the wet lands the forest the sunburnt shepherd boy with scarlet beret 
the dusk of evening on the Dordogne river tis gascony hark gascons to the music the cadets sit with bowed heads their eyes have a far-off look as if dreaming and they surreptitiously wipe away their tears with their cups and the corner of their cloaks to cyrano in a whisper but you make them weep ay for homesickness a nobler pain than hunger tis of the soul not of the body i am well pleased to see their pain change its viscera heartache is better than stomachache but you weaken their courage by playing thus on their heart-strings making a sign to a drummer to approach not i the hero that sleeps in gascon blood is ever ready to awaken them twould suffice he makes a signal the drum beats stand up and rush to take arms what what, what, is, what it? is it smiling you see one roll of the drum is enough good-bye dreams regrets native land love all that the pipe called forth the drum has chased away looking toward the back of the stage oh here comes monsieur de gouche muttering Ugh. 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 smiling a flattering welcome we are sick to death of him with his lace collar over his armour playing the fine gentleman as if one wore linen over steel it were good for a bandage had he boils on his neck another plodding courtier his uncle's own nephew for all that a gascon ay false gascon trust him not gascons should ever be crack-brained not more dangerous than a rational gascon how pale he is oh he is hungry just like us poor devils but under his cuirass with its fine gilt nails his stomach-ache glitters brave in the sun hurriedly let us not seem to suffer either out with your cards pipes and dice all begin spreading out the games on the drums the stools the ground and on their cloaks and light long pipes and i shall read descartes he walks up and down reading a little book which he has drawn from his pocket table enter the guiche all appear absorbed and happy he is very pale he goes up to carbon scene four the same de guiche to carbon good day they examine each other aside with satisfaction he's green aside he has nothing left but eyes looking at the cadets here are the rebels i sirs on all sides i hear that in your ranks you scoff at me that the cadets these loutish mountain-bred poor country squires and barons of perigord scarce find for me their colonel a disdain sufficient call me plotter wily courtier it does not please their mightiness to see a point-lace collar on my steel cuirass and they enrage because a man in sooth may be no ragged robin yet a gascon silence all smoke and play shall i command your captain punish you no i am free moreover will not punish ah i have paid my company tis mine i bow but to headquarters so in faith that will suffice addressing himself to the cadets i can despise your taunts tis well known how i bear me in the war at bapalm yesterday they saw the rage with which i beat back the count of Bequa. assembling my own men i fell on his and charged three separate times without lifting his eyes from his book and your white scarf surprised and gratified you know that detail troth it happened thus while caracoling to recall the troops for the third charge a band of fugitives bore me with them close by the hostile ranks i was in peril capture sudden death when i thought of the good expedient to loosen and let fall the scarf which told my military rank thus i contrived without attention wait to leave the foes and suddenly returning reinforced with my own men to scatter them and now what say you sir the cadets pretend not to be listening but the cards and the dice boxes remain suspended in their hands the smoke of their pipes in their cheeks they wait 
I say that Henri Quatre had not by any dangerous odds been forced to strip himself of his white helmet plume. Silent delight. The cards fall, the dice rattle, the smoke is puffed. The ruse succeeded, though. Same suspension of play, etc. Oh, maybe, but one does not lightly abdicate the honor to serve as target to the enemy. Cards, dice fall again, and the cadets smoke with evident delight. Had I been present when your scarf fell low, our courage, sir, is of a different sort. I would have picked it up and put it on. Oh, aye, another Gascon boast. A boast? Lend it to me. I pledge myself tonight, with it across my breast, to lead the assault. Another Gascon vaunt. You know the scarf lies with the enemy, upon the brink of the stream. The place is riddled now with shot. No one can fetch it hither. Drawing the scarf from his pocket and holding it out to him. Here it is. Silence. The cadets stifle their laughter in their cards and dice boxes. De Guiche turns and looks at them. They instantly become grave and set to play. One of them whistles indifferently the ad just played by the fifer, taking the scarf. I thank you. It will now enable me to make a signal that I had forborne to make. Till now. He goes to the rampart, climbs it, and waves the scarf thrice. What's, What's that? that? The sentinel from the top of the rampart. See you, yon man, down there who runs. Descending. Tis a false Spanish spy who is extremely useful to my ends. The news he carries to the enemy are those I prompt him with. So, in a word, we have an influence on their decisions. Scoundrel! Carelessly nodding on a scarf. Tis opportune. What were we saying? Ah, I have news for you. Last evening, to victual us, the marshal did attempt a final effort. Secretly, he went to Dorlaine, where the king's provisions be. But, to return to camp more easily, he took with him a goodly force of troops. Those who attacked us now would have fine sport. Half of the armies absent from the camp. Ay, if the Spaniards knew, twere ill for us. But they know nothing of it. Oh, they know. They will attack us. Ah! For my false spy came to warn me of their attack. He said, I can decide the point for their assault. Where would you have it? I will tell them tis the least defended. They'll attempt you there. I answered, Good. Go out of camp, but watch my signal. Choose the point from whence it comes. To cadets. Make ready. All rise. Sounds of swords and belts being buckled. Twill be in an hour. Good. They all sit down again and take up their games. To Carbon. Time must be gained. The marshal will return. How gain it? You will all be good enough to let yourselves to be killed. Vengeance! Oh ho! I do not say that, if I loved you well, I had chosen you and yours. But, as things stand, your courage yielding to no core the palm, I serve my king, and serve my grudge as well. Permit that I express my gratitude. I know you love to fight against five score. You will not now complain of paltry odds. He goes up with Carbon to the cadets. We shall add to the Gascon coat of arms with its six bars of blue and gold one more. The blood-red bar that was a-missing there. De Guiche speaks in a low voice with Carbon at the back. Orders are given. Preparations go forward. Cyrano goes up to Christian, who stands with crossed arms, putting his hand on Christian's shoulder. Christian. Shaking his head. Roxanne. Alas. At least I'd send my heart's farewell to her in a fair letter. I had suspicion it would be today. He draws a letter out of his doublet. And had already writ. Show. Will you? Taking the letter. I. He opens and reads it. Hold. What? This little spot. Taking the letter with an innocent look. A spot? A tear. Poets, at last, by dint of counterfeiting, take counterfeit for true. That is the charm. This farewell letter 
it was passing sad, I wept myself in writing it. Wept? Why? Oh, death itself is hardly terrible. But ne'er to see her more, that is death's sting. For I shall never... Christian looks at him. We shall. Quickly. I mean, you. Snatching the letter from him. Give me that letter. A rumor far off in the camp. Who goes there? Hello. Shots, voices, carriage bells. What is it? On the rampart. Tis a carriage. All rush to see. In the camp? It enters. It comes from the enemy. Fire. No. The coachman cries. What does he say? On the king's service. Everyone is on the rampart, staring. The bells come nearer. The king's service? How? All descend and draw up in line. Uncover all. The king's. Draw up in line. Let him describe his curve as it befits. The carriage enters at full speed, covered with dust and mud. The curtains are drawn close. Two lackeys behind. It is pulled up suddenly. Beat a salute. A roll of drums. The cadets uncover. Lower the carriage steps. Two cadets rush forward. The door opens. Roxa, jumping down from the carriage. Good day. All are bowing to the ground, but at the sound of a woman's voice, every head is instantly raised. Scene 5. The same. Roxa. On the king's service? You? I. King loves. What other king? Great God! Christian, rushing forward. Why have you come? This siege, tis too long. But why? I will tell you all. Cyrano, who, at the sound of her voice, has stood still, rooted to the ground, afraid to raise his eyes. My God, dare I look at her? You cannot remain here. But I say yes. Who will push a drum hither for me? She seats herself on the drum, they roll forward. So, I thank you. <laughs> My carriage was fired at by the patrol look would you not think twas made of a pumpkin like cinderella's chariot in the tail and the footmen out of rats sending a kiss with her lips to christian good morrow examining them all you look not merry any of you ah know you that tis a long road to get to arras seeing cyrano cousin delighted coming up to her but how in heaven's name how found i the way to the army it was simple enough, for I had but to pass on and on as far as I saw the country laid waste. Ah, oh, what horrors were there! Had I not seen, then I could never have believed it. Well, gentlemen, if such be the service of your king, I would fainer serve mine. But tis sheer madness! Where in the fiend's name did you get through? Where? Through the Spanish lines. <laughs> for subtle craft, give me a woman. But how did you pass through their lines? Faith, that must have been a hard matter. None too hard. I but drove quietly forward in my carriage, and when some hidalgo of haughty mien would have stayed me, lo, I showed at the window my sweetest smile, and these seniors, being, with no disrespect to you, the most gallant gentlemen in the world, I passed on. True, that smile is a passport. But you must have been asked frequently to give an account of where you were going, madam yes frequently then i would answer i go to see my lover at that word the very fiercest spaniard of them all would gravely shut the carriage door and with a gesture that a king might envy make signal to his men to lower the muskets levelled at me then with melancholy but with all very graceful dignity his beaver held to the wind that the plumes might flutter bravely he would bow low saying to me pass on senorita but roxanne forgive me that i said my lover but bethink you had i said my husband not one of them had let me pass but what ails you you must leave this place i and that instantly no time to lose indeed you must but wherefore must i embarrassed tis that the same in three quarters of an hour or for it were best you might you are going to fight i stay here no no, no. 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 He is my husband. She throws herself into Christian's arms. They shall kill us both together. Why do you look at me thus? I will tell you why. In despair. Tis a post of mortal danger. Turning round. Mortal danger? 
proof enough that he has put us here to the geese so sir you would have made a widow of me nay on my oath i will not go i am reckless now and i shall not stir from here besides tis amusing oh ho so our precieuse is a heroine monsieur de bergerac i am your cousin we will defend you well more and more excited i have no fear of that my friends in ecstasy the whole camp smells sweet of orris root and by good luck i have chosen a hat that will suit well with the battlefield looking at de Guiche. but were it not wisest that the count retire they may begin the attack that is not to be brooked i go to inspect the cannon and shall return you have still time think better of it never de Guiche goes out scene six the scene all but de Guiche entreatingly roxanne no first cadet to the others she stays all hurrying hustling each other tidying themselves a comb soap my uniform is torn a needle a ribbon lend your mirror my cuffs your curling iron a razor roxanne to cyrano who still pleads with her no naught shall make me stir from this spot carbo who like the others has been buckling dusting brushing his hat settling his plume and drawing on his cuffs advances to roxa and ceremoniously it is perchance more seemly since things are thus that i present to you some of these gentlemen who are about to have the honour of dying before your eyes roxa bows and stands leaning on christian's arms while carbo introduces the cadets to her baron de prorescus de colonac with a low reverence madame continuing baron de castorac de cohusac vidame de margaret astrasic lesba arascaraviat chevalier de quignac zulet baron helot de blagnac sarchan de castel cribulos but how many names have you each scores to roxon pray upon the hand that holds your kerchief opens her hand and the handkerchief falls why the whole company start forward to pick it up quickly raising it my company had no flag but now by my faith they will have the fairest in all the camp smiling tis somewhat small tying the handkerchief on the staff of his lance but tis of lace first gascon to the rest i could die happy having seen so sweet a face if i had something in my stomach were it but a nut who has overheard shame on you what talk of eating when a lovely woman but your camp air is keen i myself am famished pasties cold fricassee old wines there is my bill of fare pray bring it all here consternation all that but where on earth find it in my carriage how now serve up carve look a little closer at my coachman gentlemen and you will recognize a man most welcome all the sauces can be sent to table hot if we will rushing pell to the carriage tis no acclamations oh, 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 oh. oh looking after them poor fellows kissing her hand kind fairy Raganu standing on the box like a quack doctor at a fair gentlemen general delight bravo bravo bravo, bravo. the spaniards gazing on a lady so dainty fair overlooked the fair so dainty applause in a whisper to christian hark christian and occupied with gallantry perceived not is draws a plate from under the seat and holds it up the galantine applause the galantine passes from hand to hand still whispering to christian prithee one word and venus so attracted their eyes that diana could secretly pass by with he holds up a shoulder of mutton her fawn enthusiasm twenty hands are held out to seize the shoulder of mutton in a low whisper to christian i must speak to you to the cadets who come down their arms laden with foot put it all on the ground she lays all out on the grass aided by the two imperturbable lackeys who were behind the carriage to christian just as cyrano is drawing him apart come make yourself of use christian comes to help her cyrano's uneasiness increases truffled peacock 
coming down cutting a big slice of ham by the mass we shall not brave the last hazard without having had a gullet full quickly correcting himself on seeing roxa uh, pardon a balthazar feast throwing down the carriage cushions the cushions are stuffed with ortolan hubbub they tear open and turn out the contents of the cushions bursts of laughter merriment ah vidas throwing down to the cadets bottles of red wine flasks of rubies and white wine flasks of topaz throwing a folded tablecloth at cyrano's head unfold me that napkin come come be nimble waving a lantern each of the carriage lamps is a little larder in a low voice to christian as they arrange the cloth together i must speak with you ere you speak to her my whip handle is an aural sausage pouring out wine helping since we are to die let the rest of the army shift for itself all for the gascons and mark if de guiche comes let no one invite him going from one to the other there there you have time enough do not eat too fast drink a little why are you crying <laughs> it is all so good tut red or white some bread for monsieur de corbon a knife past her plate a little of the crust some more let me help you some champagne a wing cyrano who follows her his arms laden with dishes helping her to wait on everybody how i worship her going up to christian what will you nothing nay nay take this biscuit steeped in muscat come but two drops trying to detain her oh tell me why you came wait my first duty is to these poor fellows hush in a few minutes lebret who had gone up to pass a loaf on the end of a lance to the sentry on the rampart de guiche quick hide flasks plates pie dishes game baskets hurry let us all look unconscious to raganou up on your seat is everything covered up in an instant all has been pushed into the tents or hidden under doublets cloaks and beavers de guiche enters hurriedly stops suddenly sniffing the air silence scene seven the same de guiche it smells good here humming mm, low 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 looking at him what is the matter you are very red the matter nothing tis my blood boiling at the thought of the coming battle bum, 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 bum. turning round what's that slightly drunk nothing tis a song a little you are merry my friend the approach of danger is intoxicating calling carbon de castelgelu to give him an order captain i he stops short on seeing him play take me but you look bravely too crimson in the face hiding a bottle behind his back with an evasive movement oh i have one cannon left and have had it carried there he points behind the scenes in that corner your men can use it in case of need reading slightly charming attention with a gracious smile kind solicitude how they are all gone crazy as you are not used to cannon beware of the recoil Pooh. furious going up to him but gascon cannons never recoil taking him by the arm and shaking him you are tipsy but what with <laughs> with the smell of powder shrugging his shoulders and pushing him away then going quickly to roxa briefly madame what decision do you deign to take i stay here you must fly no i will stay since things are thus give me a musket one of you wherefore because i too mean to remain at last this is true valour sir then you are gascon in spite of your lace collar what is all this i leave no woman in peril second cadet to the first hark you think you not we might give him something to eat all the viands reappear as if by magic whose eyes sparkle victuals yes you'll see them coming from under every coat 
controlling himself haughtily do you think i will eat your leavings saluting him you make progress i will fight without breaking my fast with wild delight breaking <laughs> he has got the accent <laughs> laughing i tis a gascon all begin to dance carbon the castelgelu who had disappeared behind the rampart reappearing on the ridge i have drawn my pikemen up in line they are a resolute troop he points to a row of pikes the tops of which are seen over the ridge bowing to roxa will you accept my hand and accompany me while i review them she takes it and they go up toward the rampart all uncover and follow them going to cyrano eagerly tell me quickly as roxa appears on the ridge the tops of the lances disappear lowered for the salute and a shout is raised she bows outside vivat what is the secret if roxanne should should speak of the letters yes i know do not spoil all by seeming surprised at what i must explain to you oh tis no great matter i but thought of it to-day on seeing her you have tell quickly you have written to her oftener than you think how so thus faith i had taken it in hand to express your flame for you at times i wrote without saying i am writing ah tis simple enough but how did you contrive since we have been cut off thus to oh before dawn i was able to get through folding his arms that was simple too and how oft pray you have i written twice in the week three times four more often still what every day yes every day twice and that became so mad a joy for you that you braved death seeing roxa returning hush not before her he goes hurriedly into his tent scene eight roxa christian in the distance cadets coming and going carbo and de guiche give orders roxa running up to christian ah oh, christian at last taking her hands now tell me why why by these fearful paths so perilous across these ranks of ribald soldiery you have come love your letters brought me here what say you tis your fault if i ran risks your letters turned my head ah all this month how many and the last one ever bettered the one that went before what for a few inconsequent love letters hold your peace ah you cannot conceive it ever since that night when in a voice all new to me under my window you revealed your soul ah ever since i have adored you now your letters all this whole month long me seemed as if i heard that voice so tender true sheltering close thy fault i say it drew me the voice of the night oh wise penelope would ne'er have stayed to broider on her hearthstone if her ulysses could have writ such letters but would have cast away her silken bobbins and fled to join him mad for love is helen but i read read again grew faint for love i was thine utterly each separate page was like a fluttering flower petal loosed from your own soul and wafted thus to mine imprinted in each burning word was love sincere all-powerful a love sincere can that be felt roxanne ay that it can you come o oh, christian my true lord i come or i to throw myself here at your knees you would raise me but tis my soul i lay at your feet you can raise it never more i come to crave your pardon ay tis time to sue for pardon now that death may come for the insult done to you when frivolous at first i loved you only for your face horror-stricken roxanne and later love less frivolous like a bird that spreads its wings but cannot fly arrested by your beauty by your soul drawn close i loved for both at once and now ah you yourself have triumphed o'er yourself and now i love you only for your soul stepping backward roxanne be happy to be loved for beauty a poor disguise the time so soon wears threadbare 
must be to noble souls, to souls aspiring, a torture. Your dear thoughts have now effaced that beauty that so won me at the outset. Now I see clearer, and I no more see it. Oh, you are doubtful of such victory. Roxanne, I see you cannot yet believe it. Such love? I do not ask such love as that. I would be loved more simply for... For that which they have all, in turns, loved in thee. Shame! Oh, be loved henceforth in a better way. No, the first love was best. Ah, how you err. Tis now that I love best, love well. Tis that which is thy true self, see, that I adore. Were your brilliance dimmed? Hush! I should love still. I, if your beauty should to-day depart. Say not so. Ay, I say it. Ugly? How? Ugly. I swear I'd love you still. My God. Are you content at last? In a choked voice. I. What is wrong? Gently pushing her away. Nothing. I have two words to say. One second. But. Pointing to the cadets. Those poor fellows, shortly doomed to death. My love deprives them of the sight of you. Go, speak to them. Smile on them ere they die. Deeply affected. Dear Christian. She goes up to the cadets, who respectfully crowd round her. Scene 9. Christian, Cyrano, at back Roxon talking to Carbon and some cadets, calling toward Cyrano's tent. Cyrano! Reappearing fully armed. What? Why so pale? She does not love me. What? Tis you she loves. No. For she loves me only for my soul. Truly? Yes. Thus, you see, that soul is you. Therefore, tis you she loves, and you love her. I? Oh, I know it. Ay, tis true. You love to madness. Ay, and worse. Then tell her so. No. And why not? Look at my face, be answered. She'd love me, were I ugly. Said she so? Ay, in those words. I'm glad she told you that. But, pooh, believe it not, I am well pleased she thought to tell you. Take it not for truth. Never grow ugly. She'd reproach me then. That I intend discovering. No, I beg. Ay. She shall choose between us. Tell her all. No, no, I will not have it. Spare me this. Because my face is happily fair, shall I destroy your happiness? Twit too unjust. And I, because by nature's freak I have the gift to say, all that perchance you feel, shall I be fatal to your happiness? Tell all. It is ill done to tempt me thus. Too long I've borne about within myself a rival to myself. I'll make an end. Christian. A union without witness, secret, clodestine, can be easily dissolved if we survive. My God, he still persists. I will be loved myself, or not at all. I'll go to see what they do. There, at the end of the post, speak to her, and then let her choose one of us two. It will be you. Pray God. He calls. Roxanne. No, no. Coming up quickly. What? Serrano has things important for your ear. She hastens to Serrano. Christian goes out. Scene 10. Roxa, Serrano, then Libre, Carbon de Casteljalu, the Cadets, Ragano, de Guiche, etc. Important? How? In despair to Roxa. He's gone. Tis not. Oh, you know how he sees importance in a trifle. Warmly. Did he doubt of what I said? Ah, yes, I saw he doubted taking her a hand but are you sure you told him all the truth yes i would love him were he she hesitates does that word embarrass you before my face roxanne i smiling sadly twill not hurt me say it if he were ugly yes ugly musket report outside hark i hear a shot hideous hideous yes disfigured i grotesque he could not be grotesque to me. You'd love the same. The same. Nay, even more. Losing command over himself, aside. My God, it's true, perchance, love waits me there. To Roxanne. I, Roxanne, listen. Libre, entering hurriedly to Cyrano. Cyrano. Turning round. What? Hush. He whispers something to him, letting go Roxanne's hand and exclaiming. Ah, God. What is it? To himself, stunned. All is over now. Renewed reports. What is the matter? 
hark another shot she goes up to look outside it is too late now i can never tell trying to rush out what has chanced rushing to stop her nothing some cadets enter trying to hide something they are carrying and close round it to prevent roxa approaching and those men cyrano draws her away what were you just about to say before what was i saying nothing now i swear i swear that chris john's soul his nature were hastily correcting himself nay that they are the noblest greatest were oh she rushes up pushing everyone aside all is over now seeing christian lying on the ground wrapped in his cloak oh christian to cyrano struck by first shot of the enemy roxa flings herself down by christian fresh reports of cannon clash of arms clamour beating of drums carbo with sword in the air oh come your muskets followed by the cadets he passes to the other side of the ramparts christian from the other side oh make haste christian form line christian handle your match ragnu rushes up bringing water in a helmet christian in a dying voice roxan cyrano quickly whispering into christian's ear while roxan distractedly tears a piece of linen from his breast which she dips into the water trying to stanch the bleeding i told her all she loves you still christian closes his eyes oh my sweet love draw ramrods to cyrano he is not dead open your charges with your teeth his cheek grows cold against my own ready present seeing a letter in christian's doublet a letter tis for me she opens it aside my letter fire musket reports shouts noise of battle trying to disengage his hand which roxa on her knees is holding but roxanne hark they fight detaining him stay yet a while for he is dead you knew him you alone oh was not his a beauteous soul a soul wondrous standing up bareheaded i roxanne an inspired poet i roxanne and a mind sublime oh yes a heart too deep for common minds to plumb a spirit subtle charming i roxanne flinging herself on the dead body dead my love aside drawing his sword ay and let me die to-day since all unconscious she mourns me in him sounds of trumpets in the distance de guiche appearing on the ramparts bareheaded with a wound on his forehead in a voice of thunder it is the signal trumpet flourishes the french bring the provisions into camp hold but the place a while see there is blood upon the letter tears a spanish officer outside shouting surrender no ragnu standing on the top of his carriage watches the battle over the edge of the ramparts the danger is ever greater to de guiche pointing to roxa i will charge take her away kissing the letter oh god his tears his blood jumping down from the carriage and rushing toward her she swooned away on the rampart to the cadets with fury stand fast outside lay down your arms no, no. to de guiche now that you have proved your valor sir pointing to roxa fly and save her rushing to roxa and carrying her away in his arms so be it gain but time the victory's ours good calling out to roxa whom de guiche aided by ragnu is bearing away in a fainting condition farewell roxanne tumult shouts cadets reappear wounded falling on the scene cyrano rushing to the battle is stopped by carbon the castelgelo who is streaming with blood we are breaking i am wounded wounded twice shouting to the gascons gascons ho gascons never turn your back to carbo whom he is supporting have no fear i have two deaths to avenge my friend who is slain and my dead happiness they come down cyrano brandishing the lance to which is attached roxon's handkerchief float there laced kerchief 
embroidered with her name he sticks it in the ground and shouts to the cadets fall on them gascons crush them to the fifer fifer play the fife plays the wounded try to rise some cadets falling one over the other down the slope group themselves round cyrano and the little flag the carriage is crowded with men inside and outside and bristling with arquebuses is turned into a fortress first cadet appearing on the crest beaten backward but still fighting cries they're climbing the redoubt and falls dead <sighs> let us salute them the rampart is covered instantly by a formidable row of enemies the standards of the imperialists are raised fire general discharge fire a deadly answering volley the cadets fall on all sides a spanish officer uncovering who are these men who rush on death reciting erect amid a storm of bullets the bold cadets of gascony of carbon of castel jaloux brawling swaggering boastfully he rushes forward followed by a few survivors the bold cadets his voice is drowned in the battle curtain end of act four